What's up, everybody? Happy Friday. Hope all you're having a great day so far today. Getting into this episode of GH, listen, Ava and Austin need to get together and get on the same damn accord. They need to start reading from the same book because it seems like the walls are about to start closing in on their ass. Because yesterday you had Felicia suspicious of, of the reason why Austin was at Ava's house in the first place at that time of night. Now, Mac is questioning her about why she coming to see Austin. And, you know, she gave a good cover story. She was like, shit, I'm coming to see him because he was bleeding on my living room floor just the night before. She was like, Wiles, you know, duh. So Mac was like, okay. He bought that part, but he was like, explain to me what the hell he was doing at your house in the first place. And, you know, Ava came back and she was like, I don't know why he was there. She was like, that's why I came to see him. Find out. I'm like, these little excuses ain't going to work too much. You know, they're not going to last too much longer. Not with Mac and Felicia. Because they old school investigators. They're not stupid. Once they start getting suspicious of you and some shit ain't adding up, they're not going to stop until it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? And some of y'all answers just ain't making no sense right about now. I mean, it's, it's making a little bit of sense. But if they start seeing a pattern, like a little bit more, like y'all not on the same page, they're going to start building the case against y'all asses. They're going to start looking into you. And that's the last thing she going to want. Um, So Spencer definitely seems like he's starting to thaw out a little bit where Nicholas is concerned. Because he, him and Sonny went to go visit the new baby and stuff at the nursery and whatnot. And Sonny was asking him. He was like, you know, you starting to forgive your dad maybe and, and whatnot. And I think he is. You know what I'm saying? Now that he had a chance to calm down and Nicholas ain't been around these last couple of days, he's starting to, you know, feel like I said last couple of days for us has been the last couple of days for them. It's only been 24 hours. I got to remember that. Um. So, yeah, I, I think he's definitely starting to because, you know, he just feels like he wants to give the new baby the world and protect it and stuff like that. And, you know, he wants to know, like, did his dad ever feel that way? And I like how Sonny didn't talk negatively about Nicholas Dispenser. He was like. I'm pretty sure he did want to protect you from the world and whatnot. You know, I'm glad Sonny took the, the the higher ground. You know what I'm saying? He didn't take that low route where he bad mouthed the boy daddy in front of him. Because I think that would have been jacked up if he did that. Um, So Ava went to go see Spencer and whatnot. And, you know, she broke it down to him about how all of this came about. And Spencer didn't believe her at first that all of this was a setup by Ryan. He wasn't buying it. But Ava had food for thought for him. She was like, so whose idea was it to stalk me and terrorize me? Come to Port Charles and play these little games. And he admitted it was Esme's idea. So once he said that, he started putting the pieces together like, damn, I got played. Yeah, well, Spencer, I got news for you. Everybody plays the fool sometime and you were the fool. <laughs> you played that fool role and you got used. Ryan used you up. You did his dirty work. And now, of course, Spencer's starting to blame himself for all of this because he feels like he ruined his relationship with Nicholas. Um, thanks to Ryan. Um, and, you know, Ava told him this ain't on you. This is on Ryan. But at the same time, let's not absolve Nicholas of his foolishness these last few months, last couple years. Let's not, you know, let's not take the blame off of him because there's plenty of blame to go around for a lot of them you know i can't put all of this on just one person because they all played a damn part into this um you know but it's messed up that spencer's starting to blame himself for all of this now and i'm like it's not his fault you know and laura she doesn't have a clue where nicholas is but she felt like they're gonna find him i'm like ava you better start talking or saying something girl because i'm like when the truth come out you're gonna have to go to war with spencer all over again once he find out because i feel like even if she gives him the explanation like oh he threatened to take my daughter away you know how spencer is when he's angry he's not thinking clearly he doesn't care about your excuses or your explanations he's not going to care so now would be the time to say something so anyway this nutball Heather Weber, she wants to make a confession to uh, Dante and Jordan. But, she, of course, she wanted a deal. I'm like, Heather, you are in no position to be demanding no deals. Just tell them people everything that went down. So she started, re you know, telling them all about the hook killings and stuff and um, everything, how that all got started and, you know, the Rory part of it and her knocking out Nicholas and all that type of stuff at Windermere. So she started telling them all about that. And... I believe a lot of what she said 
until she got to the Ryan part, you know, when they told her that Ryan was dead, she was like, oh, my goodness, thank God. She was like, oh, thank God. Dante wasn't falling for that shit. Dante said, you know what? Cut the bullshit. He was like, we all know that you gave Ava that gun with the intention because you wanted her to do your dirty work and kill Ryan for your ass. That's what you did. And you knew that if he was dead, he couldn't recant any of your story because he's dead. Like, Heather thinks she's slick. I'm like, girl, they, they pulled your trump card. You're not slick, sweetie. They see you coming miles away. So Heather ended up telling Dante and Jordan what she wanted in exchange for her uh, confession. And I'm just like, girl, you, you are in no position. So after she done told them everything, she threatened to recant everything she done said unless they give her what she wanted. They didn't really want to, you know, play ball with her, but they said, fuck it. Just give it to her. <laughs> um, so, of course, the deal was she got to have some FaceTime with Esme. So she went up into Esme's room and Esme was cool with it because Mac asked Esme if she was all right with it. Esme was like, yeah, I'm cool because um, Esme already had a damn nightmare about the shit. Um, about Heather being in her room and trying to take her baby and stuff. And I will say Laura is so nurturing and so motherly because I think a lot of people just feel so at ease when they talk to Laura because Laura had me feeling sympathetic for Esme at first. Like she really did. And we all know Esme is as evil as they come. But she had me feeling very sympathetic towards her because Esme was sitting there feeling like, oh, she was all these things that people said about her. Um, and she feels like she's bad and stuff because of who her parents are. So Laura gave her some food for thought. She was like, if you think that way, do you think your own child is bad? Do you think your newborn is bad? Because you think you're bad because you come from serial killers. He's the grandson of serial killers. You know what I'm saying? He's the grandson of psychotic killers. So if you think you're bad, what does that make him? I, I agree with Laura on that. It's, it's food for thought. It's like, you know. You're not responsible for what anybody around you do. You're responsible for you. You know what I'm saying? Just like that baby. He's new. He's innocent. He hasn't done anything yet. But <laughs> um, So Matt came in there or whatever to question Esme. And she um, gave him a full statement or whatever about what happened at Spring Ridge and all that type of stuff. Um, and she blurted out that the baby's name is going to be Ace. And he was wondering how she came up with that name. And she don't even know. She was like, the name Ace just came to her or whatever. I was like, uh, Ace. Ace Cassidine. Ace Prince. I'm like, mm, yeah, I guess. Um, I suppose. I feel like it has some meaning to it because of her or whatever. Maybe it has some type of meaning that she just don't know. Because I doubt she just came up with that name from the thin blue sky. So I'm pretty sure it has some type of meaning to it. Um, but I can't wait to see her scenes tomorrow with um Heather Weber though. That shit gonna be fire, cause we all know Heather is a straight loony tune. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, you know, Laura had a little FaceTime with Sonny or whatever, letting him know, um, Heather is the one that killed his cousin or whatever. And she told Sonny, she was like, "Listen, let us handle it. Let the justice system handle it." You just back the hell off because everybody know how Sonny do. Like if he find out you did something to somebody in his family, they already know he going to want to seek retribu retribution. So they're trying to stop all of that. But I'm like, Sonny going to do what Sonny want to do at the end of the day. Ain't no stopping him. You you could cease fire on that. Um. So anyway, moving on from that, Dex and Jocelyn. I'm going to talk about them very briefly because I they give me a migraine. Um. So Dex pretty much is acting like a little little puppy. Oh, Joss, whatever you want me to do, I will do, beloved. I will do it. Whatever you want, I will do. Boy, grow a spine, why don't you? Like, good God almighty. All that begging. Oh, whatever you want me to do, I'll, I'll, I'll follow your lead. I'll do what you want me to do. Oh, my God. Oh, please. Uh, <laughs> like, Jesus Christ, son. Oh, I know your knees got to be hurting sitting down there begging all that Blue, i'll do what you want oh please um so basically he feel like if he continues to work for sunny the only way he can stay in poor charles and be safe is if sunny's behind bars and jocelyn of course agrees with that i'm like y'all are just pinky in the brain aren't you just dumb and dumber -er. like what you're talking about putting a mob boss one of the biggest mob boss on the east coast in prison and you think you're going to be safe after that. They never watched Godfather movies, have they? 
They never watched any gangster movies. They never watched Goodfellas. You never watched Casino. You never watched Godfather 1, 2, and 3. You never watched Scarface. Like, you never watched Heat with Robert De Niro. You, you don't watch gangster movies. You never heard of John Gotti and the Gambino crime family? Like, the Lachese crime family? You never heard of these people? Like, good grief. If you put one of the biggest mobsters, they ain't even got to be big. You put a mobster in prison, you think you're safe? Ooh, you think you're safe? No. You think mob bosses don't run their organizations from behind prison walls? They got enough money and power to do so. They do it all the time. You think Sonny couldn't reach out and touch you from, from Pittonville? You think so? You, you, you don't think so? Come on now. He could, he could touch you. He can get you. So you're not safe. When you go to your car, you might want to stand about 15 feet back from your car and just click the clicker to make sure the bitch don't explode on you. You know what I'm saying? So you're not in the car when the bitch go kaboom. I'm just saying, like, he don't got to be physically in town to touch you. He can get you from prison. Duh. Hello. Good God almighty. Ooh, Dex, you, you're not a thinker. Dexter is not a thinker. He's not. And it doesn't help that he's paired with him. Woo. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, good. I talked about them enough. Moving on from them. I, I ain't going to put no more energy into them. It's Friday. <laughs> We're going to move on from that bullshit. Because I'm like, listen, y'all need to go read a book and watch a gangster movie. Please and thank you. Um, so anyway, moving on from that, Liz got some FaceTime with Cameron or whatever. And, you know, she was explaining, you know, they were talking about the whole Esme mess and all that stuff. So he was wondering if Joss know about it or whatever. And Liz took it as he still, you know, care about Jocelyn. He want to forgive her. I mean, yeah, you know, Jocelyn broke the boy heart, but that doesn't mean he's heartless. You know what I'm saying? Those, you know urges don't just go away i think it's just instinct for him to naturally care about jocelyn like they've known each other forever so you know just because she played him out doesn't mean he a, a part of him doesn't feel for her you know what i'm saying cameron's a good guy you know he could try to play cold-hearted but at the end of the day he's still good at heart you know what i'm saying so he those feelings still gonna come up um so liz started talking about people making mistakes and stuff like that and um all type of foolishness Talking about what she say. Um, she said people make mistakes all the time, and all you can do is come clean. And Cameron was like, "We must be talking about we we must not be talking about Jocelyn no more." I said, "No, you're not, cause that heifer ain't never came clean. You busted that ass, so that that shit your mama talking about don't apply to Jocelyn. <laughs> she didn't come clean. You busted her. Um, so that's when she got the call from Scott to come down to the PCPD or whatever, cause Scott was talking to Robert." And, you know, trying to broker a deal for his client. Mind you, he never mentioned the client's name. He just said, you know, my client got some information about Esme's whereabouts during these hook killings and stuff. And we need to broker a deal. So when Liz came in, Robert was looking like Liz. He was looking like this the client. <laughs> um, Hopefully Liz don't get, you know, put in prison or nothing like that. I hope not. Hopefully, you know, Ryan can give her some type of. I mean, Ryan, Robert, Robert can give her some type of community service or, you know, probation or something, a suspended sentence, you know, something like that. I'm like, she don't need to be going to no prison. Prison ain't for her. Them big girls are chew Liz ass up. I mean, you get a pretty, a pretty woman like that up in prison. They, mm, they will do some things to her. I'm just saying, you ever heard of prison uh, horror stories? She'll be on the new episode. <laughs> I'm just saying, you don't want, you don't want her to go up in there with her little petite self. Absolutely not. Them big girls get a hold of her. It's lights out, literally and figuratively. Prison for her ain't an option. We need to get her in a work detail or something because you can't put her in gen pop. If she went to prison, you cannot put Liz in no general population. No, they will eat that ass alive up in there. No. Mm -mm. Them big girls ain't had no action in a while neither. And you put a cute little petite woman up in there with rosy cheeks. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope. She'd be up in there clipping their toenails and calling them big mom. You don't want to put Liz up in there. Absolutely not. She ain't going to make it five seconds up in there. They just, you know, they floss their teeth with her little ass. I'm just saying. Get her out, Scott. Make sure she don't go to prison. Robert, make sure you give her a great deal now. 
put all this on Heather and Nicholas crazy ass. Let's just throw it all on them. They did it. Fuck that. I wouldn't be sitting in prison for nobody. You go to prison for somebody, you a new fool. I'm just saying. Mm -mm. So anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. I hope you all have a great day. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I will see you all Monday. Have a great weekend. Peace.